Space in Houston on Space to Ground 2 for Mark and Tom. Are you ready for the event? We are ready. We are ready for the event. Hello, Kathy. We read you four by five. We're going to turn up a volume, but I can hear you clearly. How are you doing? So far, so good. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to, to be able to talk to you both. I'm going to wait for your partner to get back here. Hello from Earth. Astronauts Mark Van de High and Tom Marshburn are with us right now from the International Space Station. Gentlemen, uh, I'm not sure if it's good afternoon, good evening, or good morning for you. Right now, this is a midday. We go by GMT, which is kind of split between Houston and Moscow, and that's what we uh, the time, the clock that we work by. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, we are real curious to know more about the story that happened, the situation in November when you had to uh, evacuate the ISS because of Russian space debris. Now, I know you both have trained for emergencies, um, but Mark, is space debris in the mix? So uh, just to make sure we're clear, we didn't really evacuate the space station. We certainly prepared just in case we had to. And thankfully, NASA does a really good job of looking out for us. So uh, honestly, I'm kind of glad I was up here for that moment because it was uh, kind of an adventure. I don't normally get to close so many hatches, and we got lots of uh, experience closing and opening hatches as part of the process. And since I happen to be isolated on the Russian segment with my Russian crewmates, because that's who I flew up here with, or I'll depart here with, um, I got treated to a Russian breakfast, so it kind of turned out to be a good deal for me. <laughs> uh, Tom, what was it like for you? <laughs> well, for us, we had just been in uh, aboard the station for a few days, and for us, we kept thinking, boy, this is a really nice simulation in case we ever have to do this. But we were uh, very calm and actually, as Mark said, sort of enjoying the experience working hatches that we'd never had otherwise may not never have a chance to work. And then we found us, ourselves in the Dragon capsule, hatch closed, and we said, wow, I, I hope we don't need to go home now. Fortunately, we uh, passed by, it was no problem, and we were able to continue the mission. But overall, it was uh, uh, not an unpleasant experience. And Mark, when we heard this story, uh, we then learned that you have Minnesota ties, that you have a degree from St. John's University, physics from St. John's, and your sister still lives in Wilmer. When you were young, did you know you wanted to be an astronaut way back then? You know, I always thought the poss being an astronaut, I always thought was cool, but I never, ever envisioned myself becoming an astronaut. And... Uh, for me, that was like, if I ever told someone that I wanted to be an astronaut someday, it was like, to me, it, it would be like saying I want to be Spider-Man someday. It just was seemed like it had that much of a possibility. So I'm still a little puzzled that I'm up here and uh, I have this job. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, and hopefully I can maintain that that uh, sense of humility about it. The uh, Yeah, certainly as a child, I just didn't see it as a real enough possibility to uh, invest a lot of emotional energy in ever being able to do it. And yet now you're scheduled to have the longest stay on the International Space Station in history. Wow. What does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, it's that. It, if it happens, it will be quite an honor. I certainly don't want to, I think, to do something this long. We really got to stay focused on the moment at any given moment because just like life on the, on the planet, it, it just makes life more enjoyable and uh, it can feel a little overwhelming if you think if you're especially if you're having a tough day um, and you think, oh, wow, how am I going to how am I going to keep doing this for hundreds more days? But really, I'm, I'm up here with wonderful people and uh, the work is very valuable as we're doing science for all of humanity. And uh, I'm really proud that I got the opportunity that people are willing to entrust me with the work we're doing up here. So, uh, yeah, it's it's it feels good. I certainly uh, am happy to have the opportunity. By the way, Tom, tell us about the science that you are working on. What sorts of projects are really interesting to you? Well, we just completed today. We had a full day of, of looking at our muscles in a very unique way. Our, myself and my crewmates are guinea pigs in experiments, and this is one of those. Looking at a way to, to uh, measure muscles non-invasively so we don't have to do muscle biopsies someday uh, in the hospitals and ICUs. 
and looking at astronauts because we go through an atrophy process that's equivalent to for our bones we'll get in six months a bone loss that may occur over a decade for someone with osteoporosis so uh, if we don't exercise and exercise the bones and keep the muscles going so we're finding out things about how muscles react uh, to uh, atrophy which we experience and then when we exercise in the middle of that. So from a medical standpoint, I'm a medical doctor. I really enjoyed that experiment. Uh, some great investigators. We've been doing things that have uh, never been done in space, except recently here, and seeing things that have never been seen before. It's uh, very exciting from an exploration standpoint. But uh, at any given time, we could be uh, working on colloids in the glove box you might see there to your left. Uh, we could be working on uh, uh, fluid physics, uh, other medical experiments. There's just an enormous amount going on. Our, our days are packed full. You mentioned exploration, and I'm curious, and you, both of you are so highly trained. Um, I'm, what do you think of folks like Elon Musk and, and Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos flying folks into space? Do, do you welcome this new age of space tourism? Mark, I think I'm going to throw that question to you first. Yeah, I think uh, it's exciting. I think the more people that get up to see the Earth from space, the better off the Earth will be because people will really have an understanding, a better understanding of how thin the atmosphere is, that essential layer for us is for our human existence and all of all of uh, the life we're really familiar with on the Earth. And also uh, people that can afford to do it right now tend to have a lot of influence. So if, if that causes attitude shifts that help us out on the ground, I, I'll, and it comes from the observations we make from space, I think it'll be a wonderful thing. Tom, what do you think? I also I'll just add, in a, in a lot of ways, they're doing uh, future generations a favor. Oh, I'm sorry, doing future generations a favor by setting it up. This is how every mode, major mode of uh, change and major mode of uh, transportation has occurred, where people who can afford it do it, and then it makes it affordable for others in the future. By the way, I love the way you two pass the mic. You just kind of... <laughs> Literally have it float between the two of you as I'm watching you on screen. I'm curious. I, I know you both have families and children. How do you uh, <laughs> how do you keep in touch, Mark? Oh, we have uh, we get. I talk to my wife every day, and I talk to my wife and children um, every weekend. So it's been really nice. In fact, the weekend calls are typically a video teleconference. We use an internet protocol phone via the satellites we're connected to to. Uh, talk so that makes it much easier and for me we've got holidays coming up uh, um, obviously we miss our families quite a bit while we're away but we do have uh, good contact with them either through email or, or phone calls and so uh, just looking forward to seeing them again in a few months it's been a pleasure talking to you both. It's, it's really quite interesting to watch what you're doing up there. The science experiments sound fantastic. I'm watching Tom, by the way. I wish viewers could see this. Uh, you're doing a really great job <laughs> juggling the mic in space. <laughs> and uh, Mark, you look great as you're doing tumbling and somersaults for us there in space. I appreciate your time, gentlemen. Do stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great talking to you.